Alafia, and welcome to the Aoife blog. In my 70 years here on earth, and with half of that being spent studying, teaching, working with the philosophy of Ifa, it is increasingly clear to me that the single area most difficult to navigate during this journey has to do with relationships. Now, relationships can be very broad. I mean, relationships could be with people that you work with. They could be um, with friends. They could be with parents. They could be with children. They could be with husband or wife. They on and on and on. But the area recently that has come to my attention, most frequently through email, through the divination um, instruction that I give our initiates, through phone calls, through personal observation, has been individuals trying to deal with particularly parental relationships and secondarily with child or children relationships within their life. And the reason I believe that they have such difficulty is twofold. One, unlike the ancient Yoruba culture, where it was inherent, where it was simply part of the equation, a given, something you didn't question or even think about, you just acted upon. This dedication, love, nurturing of your children was primary. To the Yoruba children were, of course, the most precious possible asset because in the metaphorical as well as perhaps in the practical sense, they guaranteed your continuance. They guaranteed the immortality of those that came before. But in this culture, where self-absorption has become almost the hallmark of our behavior, children often got in the way. So when we were obsessed with or absorbed with our own short-term gratification or goals or amusements, children took a back seat. A lot of people subsequently who come to me have had not only issues in that area, but issues with their own lack of attention, nurturing, guidance of their own children earlier in their life before they came to the philosophy of Ifa. And now that they understand and try and live by a rational, logical, fulfilling worldview, they're feeling a great deal of guilt, a great deal of angst over what they perhaps should have done, but what they didn't do. There are several answers to this, several ways I think that you have to approach it. The first is to understand that we cannot make the past go away that to the extent that we spend our time anguishing over what we didn't receive or the kind of relationship that we really would like with a mother or a father or a child or perhaps even a sibling, we must honestly and accurately see what the relationship is about. For example, if your parents abused you or a parent abused you as a child, it's obviously a tragedy. It's obviously horrible. But you know that the overwhelming reality is that individuals that have been unfortunate enough or tragically enough to find themselves in that situation, still spend a great deal of their time 
wishing, hoping that it could all be better, that the love, the genuine nurturing, not the aberrated nurturing or love, could somehow be obtained as an adult. And the reason that that's so tragic is, one, it isn't going to happen. And two, because in the process of wanting that to happen, they diminish their capacity to experience the love, fulfillment, and joy of adult relationships with their own significant others and the own, their own family which they have created. The parent that anguishes over having not been as good a parent as they should have been and now know was the correct thing to do produces some of the same results. You can't go back and change it. You can live your life in a meaningful, worthwhile, exemplary way that hopefully your children at whatever stage they are at that point in time can begin to reflect and see and understand, wow, maybe there is a different way of dealing or handling with this. And maybe in that realization, a genuine relationship can be kindled, not repairing the past, but building the future. The overall problem in those relationships which actually are beyond repair or shouldn't even be considered for repair, where you have been abused by another human being in one way or another, where that human being remains as intractable and convinced of their own absolute rightness, even in the face of all they have done wrong, you are deluding yourself by thinking that it can be changed. And the way you are doing it is that you cling to a hope that somehow it could be rectified. And the reason you continue to cling is you are afraid of letting go. But the tragic and absolute truth is you're simply fooling yourself because there is nothing there and therefore there's nothing to let go of because there's nothing you could possibly be holding on to other than your own desires and not the reality of the situation. IFA is ultimately always about going forward and not going backwards. We use the past, we use history, particularly in areas of relationships to learn and to grow. And we take that knowledge and we build it into our lives. We adjust and change our matrix in a way that our own life, our own relationships begin to blossom and grow in a way that will produce what the past did not that will produce loving, worthwhile, mutually caring, mutually respectful relationships, not of objectified individuals, but of energies and souls that you love and respect. It isn't always easy. It's not always magic, but it is always worthwhile. And if you don't perceive that you're holding on to a mirage, you'll never be able to emotionally let go and get the most out of the rest of your life. Until next time, love and blessings. It works for us. It can work for you.